वाल हल्लो व नमस्ते मेरा नाम है नितिना को और आपका फिर से स्वागत है मेरे चैनल पर hmm, आज इस गेम को ऐसे नहीं खेलेंगे आज हम कुछ अलग करते हैं so here we go my name is dhina gori and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for stopping by i really appreciate your support to this video and to all my videos today i'm actually making a break video now if you've noticed this video is already in english that's because i got a lot of requests from you guys saying that you want to see some videos that are in english or you wanted subtitles so while i've been trying to add subtitles to the old videos i thought why not do a mix batch which is why today's video is in english and i'm hoping to make more of these break videos let me know in the comments what do you think below should i do more of the regular videos in english um should i do more of the regular videos in hindi itself do a break video do a mix batch i would really appreciate your comment on that so let me know that and while we're on this video today's topic is work culture comparing work culture in india versus north america Before we move on into the video do not forget to like share and subscribe also if you want me to make more of such videos where i compare and contrast working in different countries make sure you give this video a big thumbs up let me know in the comments below what else do you want to see in my break videos and without much further ado let's get straight into the details So talking about work culture. But well, working in India is very different than working in North America. If I talk about my experience, I've worked in India for 5 and a half years. 3 and a half years of those were in article ship and then 2 years post qualifying as a chartered accountant. In North America, I've worked for close to 4 years, um 3 of which have been in the United States of America and about 10 months in Canada. It's been a great journey because I've been able to see three countries with extreme details and i'm super excited to tell you what are the five major differences that i found in working in india as opposed to working in north america and canada now before we jump into the video i want to remind you that this is my personal experience and my personal journey my experience thoughts and journey could be very different from someone else's journey and thoughts of course i've tried to contact a few of my friends who are living here who are working here and i've tried to collate information and whatever you see in this video is actually something that most of us immigrants from india feel but that being said there could definitely be some people who disagree with it so please take this video with a pinch of salt and now straight to our details so number 1 networking now uh when i was studying in india in college or doing my article ship or even when i was working as a chartered accountant there wasn't a lot of focus on networking um uh, it was very difficult for me to back then understand what really is a network i did try to join a lot of these meetup groups that would meet professionally there weren't a lot of conversation about developing professionally uh, a lot of it would end up either in restaurants or having nice dinners and making new friends which of course was a process that i enjoyed but i could never really figure out how to build a network or how to network professionally that is something that i picked up in north america in north america your network is truly your net worth now how does it work how is it that you strike a conversation with a complete stranger and end up making a meaningful meaningful professional relationship out out of it how do you define a network well network is generally defined by people that you may not have met personally that you may not have had the chance of having dinners with or grabbing beers with but even then you've been able to strike a conversation that furthers your professional relationship with those people it could be related to a job it could be related to a business opportunity or it could be related to just having them as a sounding board for your career for all of that you really need a network Of course a lot of you all know that my number one place to find a good network is LinkedIn which is where I have over 44k people that I'm connected with of course your network is not someone that you're going to know in details personally those relationships take time and they happen organically over the time to begin with they are just people that you enjoy talking to that can be good sounding board for your ideas that can guide you about your field in a different country or that can help you understand a potential employer or a potential job opportunity so what really happens if you have a good network well then you're not really hunting for an investor or even a job because you already have people in your network 
that you can tap into. You can leverage those relationships and you can have them guide you or steer or navigate your career. So here is my personal experience with having a good network. When we decided to move to Canada and I was willing to go public about that thought, I wanted to mention it to my LinkedIn network that we were doing this big move. I wasn't really looking for an opportunity. I wasn't really looking for another employer. I wasn't really looking for anything. I just wanted to go out there and tell my network that, hey, I'm doing this, I'm moving to Canada. And the next thing I know is a lot of people reaching out to me asking if I'd be interested in exploring a potential opportunity. That's how important your network is. Because these are people who you've not met, who only know you through a medium, LinkedIn or any professional meetup organization. They see your potential. They track your activities. They know what you're writing about, what you're posting about. They can gauge who you are as a professional. And so whenever you need help or whenever you need guidance, there are these set of people that you can look up to. And that was about network. Now coming to number two. Small talk, well, I don't really like that term, but I call it the North American politeness. I think this is something that is significantly different than in India, because in India we're a little informal, or at least we were back in the days. Here, having that little bit of North American politeness helps you start off a conversation with anyone on a positive note. It helps you break the ice right through in the center. My two tips, if you are looking to have a small talk or as I call it, North American politeness, if you are looking to start off a conversation with people here, then my two recommended ways to go about are WWT or WWW. WWT is work, weekend and traffic. So you could potentially ask them, hey, how's your work? I hope it's going fine for you. Or you can ask them if they had a good weekend or you can ask them about the traffic. Everybody likes that. But traffic only comes into play if they live in a big city. Otherwise, you can go for WWW, which is work, weekend, and weather. Trust me, in, in the northern part of North America, all of us have something to say about the weather. Either it's too good or it's not so good. But this is a great tip if you want to break the ice with anyone that you're having a conversation with in North America. That leads me to my number three, quality over quantity. I remember in India, I had to put in a certain number of hours irrespective of the role that I was in. That is not the expectation, or I would say that is not the general expectation in North America. When there is work, you stand for it, you are available for the job when it needs you, and when you need downtime, the job stands by and supports you to do that. That being said, there are of course rules, like in Big Four, if you're in audit and assurance practices, or if you're in a regional firm or a mid-tier firm, where there's audit and there's busy season, yes, there are certain months in a year where you're going to be expected to put in a lot more hours. But I'm telling you from my own experience, these hours are only for that amount of time. So that really means that you can potentially leave the office when your boss, or I'd like to call it your manager, is still around. And that actually leads me to my point about quality over quantity. It is actually a quality of work that matters. You have been hired for your skill sets, not for being able to produce X number of hours in a week, in a month or in a year. What matters is how productive you are in those hours, how effective your work is and how you can make a difference to the whole team and their team goals by pitching in with your own work. So it is always quality over quantity here. Number four, which is probably the most difficult thing that I faced when I moved to North America, boundaries at work. Your colleagues are not your friends. Now, when I was in India working, uh, all my colleagues beca became friends, they became my best friends and they became family. So much so that I'm still in touch with them. I invited them to my wedding. Some of them even came down for my wedding. That kind of thing would either not happen in North America or it would happen gradually over a certain number of years and months. These are not the kind of relationships that we develop at work. At work, we work with people. We love them as our colleagues, but we know nothing about them beyond work. Yes, you can build amazing friendships and amazing relationships, but they take a lot more time than it would take in India. So does that mean that you would not enjoy working with them? Not at all. Personally, I love working with my colleagues. I feel they are fantastic professionals. I have enjoyed grabbing lunch with them. I've enjoyed all my coffee time with them. 
I've enjoyed learning so much from them. But do I really know what kind of people they are? Not really. Do I really know what their personal goals are in life? Not really. Do I know their families? Do I know where they live? Do I know what kind of car they drive? Not at all. Your colleagues are your colleagues. You work with them during the work hours. And when the work is done, you and your colleagues go your separate ways and enjoy your personal lives. This to me was actually very difficult because I was used to coming from an environment where my colleagues became my friends and I missed that friendliness here in North America. Of course, it's been years now and I'm probably used to the North American working style and it doesn't affect me a lot more. But if you ask me what is it that I really miss about working in India, it is this. It is the ability to have a close-knit informal circle at work, which can happen here, but it may take a lot more time. And finally, coming to the number five, and probably the best thing that I like about working in North America, work is never personal. So in India, when I would get constructive criticism or feedback on my work, it made me feel that I'm not a good professional. Of course, I knew that you know these are these are tips to improve, that I could use it positively, and I could become a good professional at the end of it. But I always felt that those comments were put in a way that I always took personally. Now, it could be, of course, my own mindset, but in general, the way constructive feedback and criticism is communicated in North America is a little different. Here, nobody's gonna come and tell you the mistakes that you made. In instead, they would come over and tell you, this is what you can improve on. The conversation is not about what you did wrong. The conversation is always centered on what is it that you can be, that you can do right. Now you're gonna wonder how does that help? Well, it helps in a lot of ways. When you stop taking work personally, you're really able to divide and segregate your personal life and your professional life. That probably did not happen a lot to me in India. Now again, like I said, it could possibly be me, but in general, this is what I've observed with a lot of my friends and my network that moved from India to North America. So because I'm able to switch off work at work, because I'm able to leave work at work, because I'm able to not take it personally, I always look forward to going to work. Because when a day is done, I'm able to switch off, write that whole day off, and tomorrow when I go back to work, I'm able to start off positively on a fresh note. Also because the communication is done in such a way that I'm always looking forward to what is it that I can improve on, I feel that there is a constant initiative by my team members or my managers or my leaders to teach me and groom me well to becoming, into becoming a good professional, a sound professional and a thorough professional for tomorrow. So I know you guys are probably going to ask, what, where is it that I enjoy working the most? Is it India? Is it the US? Is it Canada? Well, to that, I would say there are pros and cons to everyone's journey. There are things that I miss about working in India and I've already spoken about some of them in this video. And there are things that I enjoy about working in North America. Both are good in their own senses. All that matters is how, how easily you adapt to either of these working cultures and what is it that you identify more with. On that note, we're at the end of this video. I thoroughly enjoyed shooting it. There's a lot more that I want to talk about when it comes to these break videos and when it comes to my experience of working in India and so many countries all over. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do any more such videos. If you have any questions, put them in the comments or put it on Instagram and let me know how you like this video. I'm really excited to look at your feedback and I'm really excited to do more of such break videos. I'd like to end by saying that wherever you are, stay safe, stay indoors, take care of your family, spend time with loved ones and don't stop dreaming. Because if we can dream it, then we can definitely live it. Take care, bye-bye and I'll see you soon.